Hey everyone, happy wax on Wednesdays. This is gonna be part two to the photo encaustic tips and tricks that I promised a while back now. And I get a lot of questions about how to mount the photos to the cradle boards. And there's quite a few different ways that you can do this and it basically depends on what you feel most comfortable with. And today I'm gonna do one using an archival, this is a book binders glue. This is the most important thing about your adhesive, of course, is that it's archival. And uh, from there, it just depends on what you're most comfortable with using. And if you have any questions, on the supplies that I'm using on any of the Wax on Wednesdays videos, then always check. Um, there's a link below the video that will take you directly to the blog post for that week to playswithpaper.blogspot.com and it'll have all of the supplies that I used for each week's video. So other adhesives that you can use are, um, you can use Yes Paste that's a little bit thick, but you can you can certainly use it for uh, mounting your photo. You can also use an acid-free archival uh, photo mount spray as long as it's permanent. You wanna make sure that, that, uh, that the, if it's a spray adhesive that it is a permanent spray adhesive. And, and you can also use what's called a double tack film and it's a photo mounting paper and it has a double sticky, it's sticky on both sides so you can peel off the first half and mount it to the board, peel off the second half and mount the photo on top. And I might show that one in a later video that is also one of my favorite ways to mount photos is using that double tack adhesive. So for this is real simple, all you need is a foam brush for your glue and also a brayer to mount it down and either some uh, freezer paper or wax paper to put in between uh, your brayer and your photo so no so you don't get any scratching or marring from your possibly for your brayer maybe you have like me you have a little bit of paint always on your brayers so you want to put just a little protective coating in between uh, your brayer and your actual photo uh, from there, all you need is some uh, sandpaper or an emery board, and this is optional. I like to sort of uh, make it look like my picture has always been mounted to this board. Like so that the sharp paper square edges on my board, I kind of like it to look uh, blended when it's mounted. So for that, and I'll show you as I do it, I use either sandpaper or an emery board to sort of blend the edges and the corners in. So I have my photo here and it still has a little bit of white on the edges and I'm not gonna worry about that because I'm gonna sand it off once I mount it. Uh, this is on matte paper. I always, for photo and caustic, are going, I'm going to print my photo out on matte paper. I do not use gloss paper. And I have an Epson photo printer and I'll also um, try to list that on my supply list as well, exact, the exact printer that I use uh, for printing my photos, but it is an Epson photo printer. The paper itself, there's a few different papers that you can buy. It depends on what you're printing. For this little uh, little eight by 10 here, it's a Staples photo matte paper. And I find that they have a really good, pretty good um, house brand grade of paper uh, to print the photos on. It works really well. Um, you can also get you know, a Canon photo paper or a Kodak photo paper or any of the brands. Most of them uh, print a photo paper. You just want to make sure that it's matte. I just love to collect paper and try different uh, try different papers out with encaustic. I love the way that the wax absorbs into the paper, so I love trying out different papers. But I have found over the years that that Staples brand really um, it really works great for uh, for printing out. It absorbs the ink beautifully, and the photos can actually come out pretty good. So um, if you're looking to just try this out and uh, you're just getting your feet wet in photo encaustic, then that's a good it's a good brand to start with. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started here and I have an eight by 10 and this is just a, a cradle birch board and I'm gonna go ahead and take my PVA glue and just put it all over my board and I do want a good amount. I'm gonna smooth that out with my foam brush. I want this all the way to the edges. I don't want to miss any spots 
or take the chance that there's going to be bubbles in any way. And I might get in here with my fingers in the end just to make sure there's no, no gaps. I have been known to use my fingers. And I do work a little bit quickly. I would rather have just a dab too much glue and have it squish out the sides than not enough glue and have a bubble. A lot of people ask, do I use matte gel medium when I'm mounting my photos for encaustic? I do love matte gel medium. I don't have anything against matte gel medium, but I do not use matte gel medium when mounting my photos for encaustic because it is acrylic based. And so I try to stay away from any products that might peel off later on. I want this to be archival and permanent. And so I use this book binders glue. Okay, so work a working a little bit quickly. If you have, you know, used matte gel medium for mounting different projects, you know you have a little bit of time, not as much with that glue, with the PVA glue, but much more time than, say, a spray adhesive. A spray adhesive, you kind of have to be really good and know exactly where you're going to go. So if you're mounting for the very first time and you're nervous that you're not going to line up on your board correctly, then I would definitely uh, not use the spray adhesive for your first attempt at mounting. This is a much better option, this PVA glue, because you have a little bit of leeway in your adjustment time to adjust that photo. So I'm going to go ahead and put my freezer paper shiny side down. And like I said, you can definitely use a wax paper for this as well, but I'm just going to take my brayer and go over the whole thing. And I'll probably do this for a couple minutes. I'll go ahead and speed up the video, but I really don't want any chance of any bubbles going on that are going to come up later when I add that encaustic. So I'm going to go in all different directions, pushing right out to the edge, any bubbles that are there. And you can see the little black marks from my brayer, so that is why I put a piece of paper in between, so I'm not going to scuff up my photo. I do add quite a bit of pressure when I'm doing this because I want to get those bubbles out and I want a good and secure bond with that wood. If you want to give your uh, cradle board a little bit of tooth, you can give that a light sanding as well before you add the glue to raise the grain of that wood a little bit and ensure a nice bond. Another thing is if you don't have a brayer handy, you can also use a catalyst wedge to get all of those bubbles out. And it has the catalyst wedge, this is a number six, has a little bit of a give to it. Uh, it's like a silicone sort of spatula, so it has a little bit of give when you press down so you're not going to worry about ripping anything. And I do like to use the catalyst wedges as well. And you can even use it after your brayer to make sure that you've dragged out any of those air bubbles and got a really nice bond also going on the edges. So a catalyst wedge, this is a number six and I'll put that on the supply list as well. Another great tool for mounting that photo onto your cradle board. Okay, so that is adhered really nicely. There's no uh, bubbles in this. There's no air bubbles going on. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it alone while it dries for just a few minutes, and then I'll come back and sand the edges. 
Okay, this has been drying for a little while now and I'm gonna take, um, you can either take sandpaper or an emery board. I just like to, I like the look of, the clean look of sanding the edges and the corners of the paper just a little bit, even exposing a little bit of that cradle board. And this is definitely not a necessary step, it's just the way I like uh, the photos to look once they're mounted to the board. sanded. I do a little bit extra sanding because especially on my black and white photos, I really go for that sort of vintagey feel. So I'm comfortable with just sort of scuffing up um, the edges and then taking my finger on just a, this is a 200 grit uh, sandpaper, 220, and just lightly scuffing up just a little bit of areas to blend it in from those edges. So I'm not careful at all when I'm sanding because I don't mind a little bit of scuffing. It just helps that sort of aged feel. If you want a very, very clean look on your photo with no scuffing, no aging, no exposed wood, no exposed uh, white area, then um, when I sand it, I'm going for that vintage look. So I'm sanding like this, even with my sandpaper, I'm sanding like this and exposing a little bit of the white, a little bit of the paper here on the edge and even a little bit of the wood is exposed there on the edge just for a little bit of a vintagey look. If you don't want that look at all and you just want a very clean look for uh, just uh, mounting your photo to your board, then sand it like this, standing up and with your sandpaper just go straight across and any little paper that's hanging over the edge, if it was slightly too large, will just nicely, uh, nicely fall away there uh, as long as your um, paper is dry. Make sure that your paper and glue is dry and then just a light sanding with a really light sand grit paper, really fine grit and that paper will just fall away or with your emery board, you can also go across same effect and you'll have a nice clean look to your mounted photo uh, as opposed to this slightly um, exposed. I like the look of this because it just looks like it's always been um, with on the wood and I like exposing especially on the corners there and just kind of giving that a worn edge and even sanding the wood a little bit there and exposing that corner and you can see where that paper just falls right away really easily with that sandpaper once that glue is dry. But I'm not careful about scuffing that edge at all because I really like that little added vintage look. And I'll even go in here with my sandpaper and just scuff it up just a little bit more. Now I can go ahead and do more, um, add a little bit more aging to this look once I add the encaustic wax to the piece, but I can start out in mounting, just giving it that little bit of vintagey feel as I sand it down. So I hope you really enjoyed this Wax on Wednesdays video tip on how to mount your photos for photo encaustic. And if you're interested in photo encaustic, it's a really fun medium and you can get more information at Encausticology Image Exploration Workshop. It has loaded full of projects and techniques from start to finish on, on your setup, on your mounting, and all the way through um, lots of techniques for building up that lovely encaustic wax in different looks for photo encaustic imagery. And I will leave a link to that in the description box below if you want to see any of the details. 
You can also see me add the wax, the encaustic wax, to a photo encaustic piece here in Wax on Wednesdays. Uh, I will put a link to that video for part one, also down below in the description box. So if you'd like to see a little bit more photo encaustic here on YouTube, then you can click on that video below in the description box and it'll take you to, to part one of photo encaustic. So, thanks for joining me for Wax on Wednesday and see you again next week. Happy Wax on Wednesday.